Hello. Welcome to session five of this online course, taking you through George Spencer Brown's wonderful book, Laws of Form. I'm Leon Conrad, and in this session, we're going to look at three theorems from chapter four. Theorem seven is pretty simple, but theorems eight and nine build some really important steps that we're going to build on as we go through the calculus of indications that he sets out in this book. So let's do the simple one first, theorem seven. This is about consequence. He states that expressions equivalent to an identical expression are equivalent to one another. This builds on our old Albert Einstein equation, remember from the previous session, and states that if x equals v and y equals v, then x equals y. Uh, again, pretty simple, but he has to state it in order to use it and build on it. Theorem 8, I'm not going to even read through without showing you what he's talking about. Let's look at the expression here. It defines or distinguishes successive spaces. Sn, let's say is on the outside, Sn plus 1 is one level down, Sn plus 2 is two levels down, and these spaces are distinguished by two crosses. You have them nested one on top of the other. Now, in Sn plus 1, there is an expression P. That expression is also present in Sn plus 2, the deepest space. Those two spaces contain the same um, expression. And in any case, if that happens, the whole expression can reduce to the unmarked state. That's what he says. Let's see if it's true. Let's see if we can prove it. Here's the proof. We know that P can only be marked or unmarked. So we're going to substitute each value in turn into the expression and see what happens. Let's do the marked state first. That's what the expression will look like with P as a mark. You can see that the nested mark can be cancelled, leaving another pair of nested marks, and that can be cancelled as well. So if P is a marked state, then that expression renders to an unmarked state. What about P as an unmarked state? Well, we substitute, we find that we can cancel, we can cancel again and a third time, and that also reduces to an unmarked state. Now, since there's no other case of P, and there's no other way of substituting any case for P, therefore, in any case, P mark P mark over 2 is equivalent to the unmarked state. So whenever you see that pattern, you can cancel it out, or whenever you see a blank state, you can put it in. Theorem 9 has to do with variance. We covered invariance in Theorem 8. This is variance, and I'm not even going to bother reading through this. It's much more um, useful to chant this as a mantra. Basically, the words are saying this. P R mark over 2, Q R mark over 2, mark over 2, equals P mark Q mark mark over 2 R. And it can go the other way. P mark Q mark mark over 2 R equals P R mark over 2, Q R mark over 2, mark over 2. We'll come across this time and time again, and you'll be doing a lot of chanting, promise, promise you. So, let's prove it. We're going to take R and substitute the mark for R. The left-hand side of the equation will then look like this. Now, P or Q could be marked or unmarked. If they're marked, they condense. If unmarked, they just disappear. So, that reduces to this. We cancel both the sets of nested marks, and we're left with a mark, single mark. Now, we take the right-hand side of the equation. We substitute R. What happens? Well, the rest of it, P mark, Q mark, mark over 2, could have a marked value or an unmarked value. If marked, it condenses with the red mark. If 
unmarked, it cancels. Either way, it leaves a mark. Now, as we're at the beginning of this uh, session, I'll go back to Theorem 3 and remind you that if in a space there is a marked and an unmarked state, the value will be marked. And to prove it, taking you through the options, if P is marked and Q is unmarked, then you'll see that the nested pairs of marks cancel, and therefore the red mark is left. If both are unmarked, the two adjacent marks condense, and the pair of nested marks cancel. Again, you're left with the red mark. Here, if both are marked, then two pairs of nested marks cancel, you're left with a mark that condenses with the red mark, and you're left with a marked state. So, we know that the left-hand side of the expression reduces to a mark. We know that the right-hand side of the expression reduces to a mark. So if R is a mark, then both sides of the equation balance. Now, what if R is an unmarked state? So, we take it out of the left-hand side, we take it out of the right-hand side, and hey presto, we have exactly the same thing. So, if R is unmarked, then the left-hand side of the equation is equal to the right-hand side. There is no other case, there is no other way of substituting any case of R, so, in any case, Say it with me, P R mark over 2, Q R mark over 2, mark over 2, equals P mark Q mark, mark over 2, R. And going the other way, P mark Q mark, mark over 2, R, equals P R mark over 2, Q R mark over 2, mark over 2. And that concludes this session. In our next one, we're going to take a look at a calculus taken out of the calculus, and this is where things start to get really interesting. See you then.